um, as far as the rules go, um, I love fan of Fantasy Flight games, but they often don't have the clearest rules. Moreover, they do have clear rules, but you have to read 38 pages in order to find them. Uh, so, you know, Fantasy Flight games kind of tend to over over describe rules quite often. And that that can be... It, it Whenever you're looking up something you want to find a rule, like, I need to know this. It's really hard to find this. I mean, you have to flip through the whole book to find it, just about in every case. And so, you know, in that regard, I think that the game's a little weaker than it could be. But, um, you know, once you know the rules... It's not that hard of a game because, again, you're just going from place to place and activating the abilities or using the abilities on the cards you have. And then you're playing cards in order to help in certain situations. And it's really easy in that regard. So I think it's an easy game, but, again, it's it's kind of convoluted because of the rule book. I, I found it a little bit harder to comprehend. There are some parts of it that are just a little bit more... It's kind of confusing. It's just... I mean, there's some parts which are kind of like, okay, can I actually do that? How does that work? Like, going... Back and forth from this ship to that ship, it kind of confused me to begin with. It still kind of confuses me. There Especially are just when you go it. out in Vipers and stuff. Yeah, like it gets really bizarrely confusing. I, it's he he gets it more than I do. Sometimes I just I'm oblivious to what's going on. So I think it's kind of complicated, overcomplicated rather. Yeah, uh, but you know it's got a it's got a pretty pretty I don't know together mechanic. I think that it, it pr fits pretty sound. I just wish there was a little bit more to it and explained a little bit more efficiently. Right. Um, and then uh, the components. I mean, the components in a lot of ways are great. I mean, you get nice little raiders and heavy raiders and vipers and, and even the raptors, which serve really no purpose except for some sort of currency. Uh, but And then the other side of the issue is like the civilian ships are just cardboard chits that don't even look like civilian ships, really. Um, and but the the base stars those are the most disappointing I think I mean you're looking at all these plastic miniatures and then you get the base star which is just a cardboard chit which I mean the base stars are some of the coolest ships in the in the show and you kind of expect for them to be cooler than that but they aren't um, but at the same time you get these nice little dials I love these things and they just kind of snap right in and then you can monitor how your resources are going throughout the game because of that. Um, now, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of the hopping between rooms thing. It's just kind of abstract for me. But uh, I love the player tokens because it's really easy to see. Like, I like plastic miniatures for players, the different players that they can have, you know, little plastic miniatures going around. But those are almost never painted. And so it's really hard to tell the difference between two different players. It's really easy in this game to tell the difference between players because they're full-color pictures. Right. And as far as cardboard pieces held on by plastic... That is thick. Yeah, it's thick. It's high quality. It's about as thick as I've seen. So, you know, I know that I've seen, like, Hasbro games use that kind of uh, system. So it was kind of unappealing to me to begin with but it's as beautiful and uh, sturdy as it possibly could be. So I gotta give them kudos for that. It, overall, it's a really good package. I think that I would have made a couple different changes, especially since it's not a cheap game. And Fantasy Flight is generally pretty good about including a lot of cool plastic miniatures and stuff like that. It would have just been, it would have helped things immensely if the base stars had have been plastic ships. There's only two of them, so you know, it would, you know, just some cool plastic miniatures. I don't know. That's all so. we're asking for. Just give us some toys. we got plenty of them in the StarCraft board game, so I don't understand why we can't in this one. But what do you think about the components? I like them. I, I really, really like the dials. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I'm not as big of a fan as uh, these little things as he is. Uh, I rather enjoy plastic miniatures, uh, mostly because I spend the entire game looking at it, and I know exactly where I am at every time because I'm never looking away. Yeah, but beyond that, I mean, like, yeah, I do agree. These should have been plastic, uh, cardboard. Yeah, it's boring. But other than that, fun little ships to play with. So when you're sitting there trying to figure out what to do, when you're possibly room to room, you can look at the pretty. Yes, I like the pretty. Indeed, and there are neat images on the cards as well as the different room locations and stuff like that. The one thing I will say uh, is that a lot of the components and a lot of the text for the game uh, has some spoilers if you haven't got through at least like 
season one or season two of the show, there will be minor spoilers. Mostly, people aren't going to have a problem with that, but occasionally some people, because they're not major spoilers. I've only seen one in which I would consider it even a moderate spoiler. Uh, I know there's at least one character that if you're reading their draws, you might find a spoiler. Um, but, you know, as far as that goes, I don't think it's too bad. Uh, but, you know, you haven't played it. I mean, do you remember anything that was could be considered spoilerish, Or you haven't watched it? Yeah, I've played it. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I mean, there, there was like one thing I recall you going, "Yeah, let's not read that." Yeah. And I was like, "Huh?" I just that's the flavor that. text too, so you don't even have to yeah. read the flavor text. Mostly, it's just you know, I don't I don't even know what's going on most of the time. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm just kind of playing a game. Don't know who these people are. Don't know what they're doing. I guarantee, by the time I watch the show, I'll forget it all anyways. Yeah. So. Even before you watch the show, yeah, overall, um, I think it's a great game. The problem is, co-op games kind of fade in and out for me like sometimes I'll be really in a co-op mood and this is one of the top co-op games in, in my opinion it's been a few months since we started playing it and I still I still hold it fondly um, but right now I'm not in a co-op mood so you know it's not getting much play time right now and then suddenly I'll be in a co-op mood and between this and Shadows of Cam uh, Shadows over Camelot and Pandemic uh, we got a pretty good uh, pretty good co-op fix I think but uh, yeah Pretty good, pretty good system uh, overall. Um, it's not one of my favorite games, but it'll definitely get a lot of playtime uh, because it's a very thematic game, and I love the whole trader mechanic. So I love that. If if it wasn't for that, I, I would just rate it as an average game, honestly. But it's it's really almost like an experience as opposed to a game. Um, it is what the players will make of it. So if you have a very interesting group that enjoys accusing each other of things and really gets into the moment of being accused and, and we do. doesn't really get offended very easily, then you're going to have a lot of fun with this game. If, you're, if your group just likes game mechanics and that's all they're going to do, then they may have a problem with... with because the, the game mechanics aren't the strongest in the world. I think the real fun comes from the traitors working together and trying to accuse and convince people that no no that's the traitor really it's a lot of fun in that it, regard I, I absolutely i mean like that is if it wasn't for the traitor thing i probably would not like the game at all yeah because it does get boring yeah it, it's just like with our group we are very very interesting people we have a lot of fun with it you don't have an ego at all either no <laughs> uh but yeah, it's it's really interesting. Like you know, there are two people. You know, you're not the Cylon. You're playing with two other people, and they're both equally strong in their arguments against why they're not the Cylon or why the other person is. And it's like, oh god, what do I do? And so you spend the next you know ten minutes trying to figure out who you should believe, hoping it doesn't screw you over in the end of the game. Yep. So uh, ultimately, yeah, because you know, making your decisions and stuff can really affect how the game ends. If you can really trust someone, and you know you can trust them, and you you trust them and it all works out fine, then you're in good shape because you could team up on the person you know as a Cylon to begin with and really uh, maintain the amount of damage they can do you, to you. So, and with, when you're the Cylon, you really have to make an effort. Do I want to reveal myself and be able to consciously go up against them or should I try and do as much damage as possible while hiding? So a lot of that really makes the game. And that's the strongest point, in my opinion. 